हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इस एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड सर्किट एलिमेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड सर्किट एलिमेंट्स लेट अस कंसीडर एन इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट एनी इंडिविजुअल इलेक्ट्रिकल कंपोनेंट्स लाइक रेजिस्टर इंडक्टर कैपेसिटर वोल्टेज सोर्स करेंट सोर्स विथ टर्मिनल्स इज एन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्क्यूट एलिमेंट एनी इंडिविजुअल इलेक्ट्रिकल कॉम्पोनेंट्स लाइक रेजिस्टर इंडक्टर कैपेसिटर वोल्टेज सोर्स करेंट सोर्स एक्सेट्रा विथ टर्मिनल्स इज एन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्क्यूट एलिमेंट so any electrical component with terminals is known as electric circuit element now let us understand what is a branch a branch is a single circuit element or circuit elements connected in series so branch is a single circuit element or circuit element that are connected in series so you can see from a to b we are having a single circuit element we can call ab as a branch of circuit in the same way cf is having circuit elements that are connected in series we can call cf as branch of circuit similarly we are having cd as branch of circuit ad ef de these are all the branch of circuit so from the example circuit we can say ab bc cd ad cf ef and df as branch of circuit now let us understand node a node is a junction of two or more circuit element or branches so a node is a junction of two or more circuit elements or branches so as you can see here we can consider a as a node because it is a junction of two circuit elements in the same way we can consider b c f e and d as node because they are the junction where we are having two or more circuit elements or branches so from the circuit we can say a b c d e and f as node of the circuit now let us understand junction point junction point is a point where three or more branches meets a point where three or more branches meet is known as junction point in this example d is a junction point where three branches will meet at this point as you can see at this point there are three branches that are meeting that's why we can say d as a junction point in the same way c is also a junction point where three branches are meeting so we can say d and c are junction point in this circuit so from the circuit d as well as c are junction point now let us see what is a resistor resistor opposes the flow of current through it so a resistor opposes the flow of current through it so wherever we connect resistor in a circuit this resistor will oppose the flow of current flowing through it we can denote resistor as capital r and it is measured in terms of ohm so resistor opposes the flow of current through it and it is measured in terms of ohm so the resistor is denoted by capital r the resistor of a given material can be denoted as r is equal to rho l by a here rho represents resistivity in terms of ohm meter l represents length in terms of meter a represents 
cross sectional area of material in terms of meter square and here r represents resistance in terms of ohm so resistor of any given material can be given as r is equal to rho l by a here rho represents resistivity in terms of ohm meter l represents length in terms of meter a represents cross sectional area in terms of meter square and r represents resistance in terms of ohm there is a relation between voltage current and resistor that can be written using ohm's law so we can write v is equal to i r from ohm's law from this we can write r is equal to v by i so this is the formula for resistance in terms of voltage and current the power absorbed by the resistance can be given as p is equal to vi this can be written as v square by r since i is equal to v by r also we can write this as i square r since v is equal to i r so this is the formula for power absorbed by the resistance and power is always measured in terms of watts now let us understand inductance in inductance the energy is stored in the form of electromagnetic field so in inductance the energy is stored in the form of electromagnetic field the inductor is denoted by capital l and it is measured in terms of henry so the unit of inductance is henry which is denoted by capital h so the voltage across the inductance can be given as v is equal to l di by dt and the current can be denoted as i is equal to 1 by l integration of minus infinity to t v dt so this is the expression for current through an inductor therefore the power can be given as vi so if we substitute the value of v in this formula we will get p is equal to l di by dt into i so this is the expression for power absorbed by the inductor if an inductor has n number of turns and flux is given as phi and this flux is produced by current i of t then we can write v of t is equal to n d phi by dt so if we consider an inductor if it is having n number of turns and the flux is produced which is represented by phi and the current that is flowing through the inductor is represented as i of t at that case we can write voltage is equal to n into d phi by dt here the total number of flux linkage is proportional to the current through the coil therefore we can write n phi is equal to l i so here the total flux linkage is proportional to the current i from this we can write l is equal to n phi divided by i and energy stored is given by w is equal to 1 by 2 l i square of t now let us understand capacitor in capacitor energy is stored in the form of electrostatic field so in capacitor energy is stored in the form of electrostatic field the capacitor is denoted by capital c and it is measured in terms of farad which is represented by capital f 
so the energy is stored in the form of electrostatic field in capacitor and capacitor is denoted by capital C the unit of capacitor is farad that is represented by capital F here I can be represented as C dV of T by dt from this we can write v of t is equal to 1 by c integration of minus infinity to t i dt and c can be written as q by v this is about circuit elements these circuit elements and formulas are very important for our future topics hope you have understood this topic thank you